What is going on at YouTube? Bryce builds it all. Your favorite AMPIA back with another video. Last fit week, I had done a video on sheet metal repairs and how to do a flush patch. And I, and I wanna make a follow-up video to that. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure you watch it first. But I'm gonna be uh, correcting a couple of things that I had said wrong and elaborating a little bit more on some points that I didn't do a good job of making in that video, but I think that need to be brought up. So if that interests you, stick around. Okay, so as I've been saying lately, let me move you a little bit more this way so I'm kind of out of the light. Um, anyways, as I've been saying, I've been filming these videos for practical projects for students uh, getting ready to test for their OMP to become an aircraft mechanic or a certificated AMP mechanic. And the video I did last week was on making a flush patch. It is a project that you might get at the DME. And the first thing I want to correct or make a point of saying is that in the last video that I did on this, I made the mistake of saying that your rivet should be three times the thickness of your, your rivet diameter should be three times the thickness of your thinnest sheet of metal. And that's wrong. It's three times the thickness of your thickest sheet of metal. I had misspoke when I said that. I didn't notice it when I was editing the video and it wasn't until I had uploaded it that somebody corrected me and said it's, thickness, it's thickest. And I was like, Indeed it is. I misspoke on that. So I pinned that comment on the last one. So again, your rivet diameter or the diameter of the rivet should be three times the thickness of your thickest sheet of metal. So if it's 050, then it would be uh, 1.5, whatever, or sorry, 0.15. So whatever that comes out to in 30 seconds of an inch should be your rivet diameter. So I calculated it out for 032, 2024 T3, uh, which is what we have here at the school. And I got a, a dash three rivet. And then I also said that your edge distance is supposed to be 2D to 4D. Now, I did this smaller patch here at 2D. So this is 6 30 seconds. And I did the bigger patch here at 4D or the max. So 4 times 3 is 12. So that's 12 30 seconds or uh, 3 eighths of an inch on this one here. Both of these are acceptable edge distances. And you see how much smaller this one is. But it's worth it to mention, or it's, it's a good idea to mention, that most all mechanics, including me, and most all instructors will tell you that it's a good idea to use 3D for your edge distance, or three times the rivet diameter. And the reason you do that is because mathematically, if anything happens, and I have to enlarge this hole here, and go from 3 30 seconds to a 4 30 seconds, I can put a 4 30 seconds rivet, 4 30 seconds rivet in that hole without going past the edge distance limit. So we'll do some math on that real quick. 3D for a 3 30 seconds rivet would be 9 30 seconds. So if I had to drill that hole out and go up to a 4, 2D for a 4 30 seconds is 8 30 seconds. So with the hole being at 9, I would still be within my 2D for the next size up rivet. And the math works for a 5 30 seconds and a 4 as well. Hang on, I'm getting a scam call. That have just been constant lately. So if I had a 4 30 seconds rivet and I accidentally messed it up and I needed to redrill it for a 5 and I had it at 3D, a 4 30 seconds rivet would be 12 30 seconds for my edge distance. So 12 30 seconds or 3 eighths from my edge distance. And then, oh no, I gotta put a five. Well, 2D for a 5 30 seconds is 10 30 seconds. So it's still within its range of 2D. So always uh, in practice use 3D. It's just a little bit better number. The third and really important thing that I kind of ran out of time and didn't do a good job saying is you need to do a really good job of rounding your corners. You don't want sharp corners like you see here on this piece. Now these are all comments and things that people had pointed out, so and that's kind of why I'm making this video. It's just to clarify that if you watch that other video. But you want to round off the corners uh, with a nice radius as to not have any sharp points inside the patch because that's going to cause you to have a, a high stress point. And the whole point you're probably doing this is because you had a crack or some damage that you were removing. So you're doing this to remove that crack or damage and you don't want to immediately introduce more cracks or more damage. Now. On, the, on the, the path of rounding your corners, it is also a good idea to always use a circle patch if you can, either a circle, an oval, or some sort of ellipsis shape, ellipsis, ellipses, ellipses shape if you can. But a circle is best. I just used a square because the DME that I had spoke to, I asked him, what does he give for this project? And he says that he hands him two square sheets of metal and that's the tooling he has. He has the tooling to make a square patch. He has the tooling to cut a square hole. So that's what he has them do. However, in reality, typically you're going to do a circular patch. Now, I'm going to show you where you find this stuff in the book. This is the AC 4313 1B. Now it is worth to mention, if you are doing this on an aircraft, not 
an OMP project, then you would go to the aircraft's maintenance manual first and see what they say. They may very well tell you to reference 4313 as your data, and if they tell you to use 4313, then they've incorporated it by reference. You can use 4313. Um, but they might not do that depending on what it is. But this is 4313. Chapter or section four is metal repair procedures. And I'm gonna kind of screen record this on the iPad so it's a little bit easier to read, but I'm gonna skip forward several pages to where it goes talking about um, edge distance and rivet pitch and double rows and all of that stuff and it gives you examples. And the first is in figure 4-5. So this is 4-5 and it's just showing you a typical splice of two sheets of metal. And then if you keep flipping through, it shows you some improperly shot rivets, what to do, what not to do, and how they should look when they're done in figure 4-6. And then it shows me blind rivets, which I didn't talk about. And finally, the most important one that I'm trying to get to here is figure 4-16. Figure that is this figure here. And again, screen recording this on the iPad. It shows you a bunch of different acceptable repairs for skin. One is a scab. One is a flush patch using a doubler. Um, and like I said, it's a circle. If you look on the far left, it shows the circle. Um, so it just, it gives you some options there on different ways to repair the metal should there be an issue. I think it even gives you the, the radius on one of these. It tells you the good radius uh, for the corner. But anyways, you get the idea. That is where you're going to find your data. And anytime you're doing a, a sheet metal uh, repair, you need to make sure you're using data and you need to make sure you're referencing back to the FARS to make sure you're not accidentally doing something that would be considered a major repair. Because if it's a major repair, then you're obviously you're going to have to call somebody like me, an IA, to approve that for return to service after it has been completed. But there you go, everybody. I'm not going to yap on too much longer. I just wanted to make a couple clarifying points on that last video. Like I said, if you haven't seen it, I will link it at the end of this video um, so you can watch both of them together. This is a project that you may get at your DME. He might not have you do square. He might want you to do a round repair. He might want you to do a scab patch. It just depends on your DME. But now that you know where to find the data and now that you have some tips for edge distance and all that, that I, like I said, wanted to correct for my previous video, Hopefully you can go into that project a little more confident. So that's going to do it all for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you don't, leave, don't forget to leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, go build something and be easy.